Hello there, welcome back. And uh, today we're taking a look at Corel Aftershot Pro, and we are going to be discussing dodging and burning, which is really just lightening and darkening. If you're if you're not a uh, old school photographer who actually dealt with film and dark rooms and all of the uh, uh, techniques that were used to make one little area lighter or darker than another area, um, you don't have to worry about that. It's essentially lightening and darkening areas, little specifics. So you, so instead of like an image like this, if you want to make everything lighter or everything darker you can just grab the sliders and you can you know yank them and uh, I can everything's bright everything's dark right and the entire thing across the board gets affected using layers and in specifically what we're going to use in this adjustment layer we can actually make just certain areas lighter or darker now if you haven't checked it out already look at my intro to layers video which will be up here on the screen which kinda covers the general functionality I won't um, go through all of the functionality again here today. Just I don't want to waste your time. We're just going to jump right into it. So you can watch that to learn more about how to do the layers thing. Uh, and uh, you know, again, some of this stuff that I you know talked about in there obviously will very very similar to what I'm talking about here because I am using the same image just for continuity and you know it's a nice enough image for this sort of thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is create an adjustment layer, and I am going to. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, and I want a brush here. I'm going to come in. I'm going to make it a little bigger. Drop the intensity a little. So what I'm doing here, again, if you uh, haven't watched the intro video yet, is I'm simply masking off an area. And I can, you can see that here. And what I'm going to do is try to just darken that up a little bit. I can take a look. And then I can go like here. See, here's original. Here it is, a little darkened in. And again, I, you could be super careful and get down really small. In this video, I'm not again. I'm not going to take two hours to do this, and uh, I'll just kind of do a quick run through. So this is essentially burning in this area. I'm darkening just these areas that I've masked off. Now what I'm going to do here is create a second layer, and uh, this is going to be used for highlighting a little bit. I want to make things a little bit lighter. I mean, I don't, you know, want to go bananas. So I'm going to essentially what's known as um, dodging, which will do to lighten an area, and I think that will work. I don't want it. I don't want uh, the whole thing, just the leading edge, basically. And so again, any adjustment I make here will be in the affected area. That intensity might be a little big. I'm gonna start over. Just keep myself. Let's see here down. I like to work in uh, more subtle subtle ways than I don't want it to look like I painted on or you know grabbed a it's better to make people wonder if you've done any editing than to just confirm it all. And I, again I'm not going to be uh, super careful here today just because this is a demo Again, dodging and burning demo. So I'm going to pull this out, zoom in over here. We'll do a little more work. Oops, there, there you see it's already been covered. So I'm going to do show strokes so I know not to bother, not to mess up the area I've already done. Come through here. Whoops, now I've made a mistake here. And it's like, ugh, now what do I do? Well, I can do this. Paint over that area. And it goes away. Like that. And again, you can uh, change sizes. You can change the intensity based on the strokes you're doing. If you have an area that's already lighter and you just need a teeny bit versus, uh, you know, areas that are... Um, you know, needing a lot more, you can you can obviously do it stroke by stroke. 
and I'm going to do this area up here. Make that bigger. And I'm going to drop the intensity down quite a bit. And as, and as I said, I'm not suggesting that this is the right way to modify this image. This is simply a tutorial to uh, kind of give you an idea of, of the technique itself. So what I've done there is I've obviously masked off uh, a bunch of the areas and now I can play with the actual change that I want to make. Now you can make this change before masking uh, to dodge and burn so you can see it as you go along uh, or you can do it after the fact and I will show you both. So this is the after the fact model. This is me knowing that I wanted to make this change so I go and I just mask it all off and then I can play with uh, the change that I want to make. So I can go here with exposure and you can see that this is getting a little bit lighter. This is pretty light here because if you remember I had the intensity set pretty high here and then pretty subtle here. So this is uh, again the artistic decision you need to make based on the uh, image you're working with. And so I can play with that and you know obviously this is horrible here but up here it's pretty nice and subtle. I can zoom in a little bit. You can just see the see the difference. So the intensity, uh, and I'll go really high with this so we can see it. You can see here that with an intensity set high, you get a very stark um, effect. With the intensity set a bit lower, it's a more subtle effect. And so as you get into a range of more sensibility, you can you can see the effect that it has. Now let me take this off. And I'm going to take this one off too. And in fact, I'm going to. Uh, I want, is everything decent like this? What I'm going to do is another adjustment layer. And in this case, I'm going to. You notice that the uh, settings here have, have reverted back. So I'm going to actually jump this up to something a little higher. This gives us a quick preview. And uh, you'll see, obviously, it's some. Um, uh, See how it jumped back down after I've actually started the editing process? And uh, that's just a, a way for it to, again, you get a bit of a preview. This is the effect you're going to be making. And then now as we make it, because I have this exposure increased already, we're going to see it as we go along. So I'm going to bump this size up a little bit, bump the intensity down a bit, because that other intensity was just not good at all. And I'm going to paint mask off this area and when I let go it already shows me the effect and this is really really nice uh, so that you can decide I want to go a little further maybe I want to you know create the edge down here a little bit and you can work your way in and again every time you do a stroke you can change the intensity so I can lower this here and, and go here and so the effect is much more subtle so you can really have um, quite a bit of effect on your final image by using these techniques, this dodging and burning technique. In this case, this would be the dodging. And again, from the film days, what I'm doing is just making the area a little bit lighter by, uh, by doing this. Uh, obviously, I'm making it lighter. You can see it on the screen. <clears throat> so that is your uh, one technique. So this case, again, everything's reset back to zeros. I'm going to increase my black and you know you, again you can also use exposure as your as your uh, mechanism for doing this so we'll, we'll take a look at both so you can see you know just see it real quick so what I've done here is I've, I've increased black a bit and now I'm going to uh, hop in and uh, same deal lower my intensity a bit in this case I'm going to increase my size just a touch just so we can see it better and I'm going to come in here and it's a little harder to see because the, obviously the way the blacks work but I'm gonna let me just do this area here so we have a little better we can actually see it in action a little more clearly you can see how it got a little darker there as I let go and so this is the uh, burning in technique I can actually make things darker I'm gonna zoom out go over here so let's say this leading edge of the bark is just not it's just too light right my dynamic range whatever I did you know that I don't I don't want to have to mess with trying to fill this and lower the exposure on the whole thing I just need to adjust one area 
which is this leading edge. So this technique is a really good one for doing that. And so again, I've got my um, everything set fairly subtly. So what I'm going to do now is change my blacks back to zero here. And I'm going to drop exposure. And you see how they just, this area that I masked off, the effect that it has. Let me zoom out and you can see it more fully. So this is the way you can decide what effect I want to have, meaning what technique, what adjustment I want to make. So because everything is on this one adjustment layer, right? I didn't do multiple layers like this. I could have done one layer here and done blacks and one layer here and done exposure. Follow? So here I'm just, again, for this demo, showing, showing the difference here. So I can affect it that way or I can affect it this way. Right? So let's say the blacks were good in all of this, but I want a different area down here to be exposure. I don't want them all to be the same. It's as simple as um, creating another adjustment layer and then um, playing with, like, so I'm going to, uh, let's say I'm going to raise the exposure in this case. Uh, just so we can, it's, it'll be more uh, something more obvious. So down here, I'm going to increase the size. Same thing, lower intensity, and I can come in here, and it lightens. So I've I've uh, burnt in these areas, and now I'm dodging these areas, making them a little bit lighter. Obviously, I'm doing it so that we can see it more than because I think it looks good. So th this is a way that you can have. Anything, again, done to this adjustment is going to affect only this masked area, which is on adjustment layer, in this case, 4. I didn't bother renaming them. You can obviously name them uh, as you see fit. So from a dodge and burn viewpoint, my recommendation is to create different layers based on the areas you're working that need to be different from one another. So leading edge of something would be in one layer, whereas the the, the edge on the other side would be another layer versus another object might be a whole different one. That way you can micro adjust individual little things. Like let's say I want this to be lightened as well, but I want it to be different than this, right? It's, it's simple as a matter of creating another layer, changing the exposure, changing intensity, right? So on and so forth. And then I can change my size a little bit. I can roll in here and just subtly change this moss a little bit. Maybe I want to give it a little more shape to it. Right? So this, you know, discovering this completely jumps your ability to post-process your images to a whole other layer. No, no uh, pun intended. A whole other level would have been a better choice of words. Um, you know, yeah, I've watched guys do this in uh, the, the more advanced softwares, the Photoshops and, and Lightroom and that sort of thing. And Aftershot, to me, always seemed like it was a bit lacking uh, in that area until I, you know, got my head out of my rear end and discovered layers and spent some time learning a bit about them and using them. I fully recommend playing around with them. Uh, I will tell you, again, my basic workflow is to always create a copy of a layer as opposed to um, just starting to make changes because now you've, now how do I get back, right? If, if this image was the um, you know the end all beat all and I've just now done all these changes to it now what do I do well now you're having to either hit undo or in this case what I you know fortunate enough I can actually delete the layers off so I can I can actually come in and, and remove them and get back to some semblance of what it was before but if you if I didn't do that if I had uh, made a copy originally and then used that to fart around I would be uh, able to quickly jump back and forth or just delete the whole thing right if, if you do a whole nother image copy image uh, you know version from current if you're not familiar with that super easy and then I can uh, you know I could fart around with uh, all the settings and then if I go oh that's no good at all I can either hit undo and try to go all the way back because if I hit reset all it's gonna take me back to the very original which is quite a bit different right so this image versus this image so you know, again, if you've done the V2, V3, V4, you can just say, you know what, I'm done with that thing, delete. Make sense? Anyway, thanks for listening to me ramble a little bit, but hopefully it was also informative. Please um, 
check out my other Corel Aftershot Pro videos. I've got the introduction video, and I'm going to be doing a clone video as well. And if you've got other things that you're interested in learning about, uh, I'm happy to make other videos. So please leave me a comment below, and uh, I would love to uh, get into it with you. Talk to you later.